Hey there, it's Kevin from Happy Coding here. And tonight I'm going to do something a little different. Um, I'm going to keep working on the P5 examples. And tonight I'm going to focus on an example that highlights creating functions or gives you a way to practice creating functions. Uh, the thing that makes tonight different is that um, this won't be a standalone example. I think I'm going to try to do a three-part example that kind of builds on itself each each time. So tonight I'm going to define a function that draws a house like this and tomorrow I'm going to define a different function that calls this function and then on the third night uh, I'm going to take you to the next level um, so that you can see uh, sort of the power of calling or creating functions in a way that might not seem obvious if you're creating a function by itself. Um, so yeah, tonight my goal is to create a function called draw house or something that does exactly that, that draws a house based on some parameters that you give it. Um, so I drew this, uh, this house right before this, and I, as I'm looking at this, I'm like, it's kind of funny that this is my canonical version of a house because I don't think I've ever lived in a house that, that looks like this. I've lived in apartments my entire adult life. I grew up in a like a one-story farmhouse. Uh, so I don't know I don't know why this is my idea of a house. Probably something to do with you know the culture I live in and whatnot. But here we are. This is the house I'm going to draw tonight. So it's got like a triangle, it's got a maybe rectangle or square, um, some, some windows and a door with a doorknob welcoming you to your new home. So that's the goal. So I'm going to go over here to my P5 editor and just get started. Um, here's our handy dandy gray canvas. And uh, there's a couple things I can do here, um, but maybe let me just start by saying that the idea of creating a function is to organize your code in a way that lets you think in certain units. And by that, I mean, when I call the circle function, just to give you an example, let's say I put it right in the middle and I uh, give it a size of 100, say. Um, I, I don't have to worry about what's inside of the circle function. That it has already been written. It was somebody else's job or it was likely a volunteer since P5 is open source. Um, but you know, I, I don't have to think about the individual pixels inside of the circle. I don't have to think about how they figure out exactly where on my screen to draw. I don't have to figure out anything about the browser or the underlying operating system. I just say circle and the circle function works. And that's, that's a powerful tool and you can use that tool in your own code. So tonight I'm going to define a function called draw house and by the end of the night, I'll be able to call a draw house exactly like I can call any other function and not worry about the, the details of it. Uh, so that's kind of just framing the goal. So I'm going to maybe just get started by defining the function already. And I'm gonna call it something like draw house and it's going to take some parameters. Let's call it like house X, house Y. I'm going to spell house wrong about a million times tonight. I can already warn you of that. Um, house width and house height. Uh, I could probably give these different names, but eh, whatever, I'm not feeling very creative tonight. So I've got my four parameters and uh, it doesn't do anything yet, but I can think about what it would look like to call it. I could say draw house and then I would give it um, four parameters. So an X value, a Y value, a width, let's say like 200 and a height. So um, when I run this sketch, what will happen is setup will run, it'll create a canvas and then draw will start being called 60 times a second. It'll draw a gray background and then it will call draw house and it'll run any code inside of here. So right now draw house doesn't do anything. So if I hit play, not surprisingly, we don't, we don't see anything, let alone a house. So I can start to iterate on this and I can say my house will just be a rectangle. Um, house width, house height. This is not a very exciting function just yet. It's not, it's not very interesting. All the draw house function does is draw a rectangle at the coordinates that you gave it. So when draw is called, it calls draw house with an X coordinate of 100, that's here. 
y coordinate of 100 that's here a width of 200 and a height of 200 so i could start to experiment and i could say let's increase this to 300 and it's going to get a little wider i could say let's decrease this to 100 and it's going to get a little uh, shorter and that's because these numbers are being passed into this function and then further passed into this function so that's that's kind of how it all fits together um, let me change this back real quick and uh, I think I want to keep this rectangle here for a second just to give me some some guidelines I might turn off the fill for a minute and so this gives me kind of the outer boundaries of of where the house should be drawn and it's kind of up to me as the as the author of the draw house function to sort of interpret these parameters and so i've got an x and a y and a width and a height and i can look at my house and i can say you know where do i want my 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 x y to be and what what does it mean to give me a width and height so for example uh just to I, I could say something like the x, y that I pass in is the doorknob. When you, when you specify an x, y coordinate of a house, you're actually talking about the doorknob. And the width is from the leftmost to the rightmost. And the height is from the bottom of the like, ground to just under the roof. You know, I, I, that could be what we decide. Um, or, or you could say that x, y is right at the tippy top of the roof. And you know, there, there's a lot of different ways you could do it. And what I want to think about is what will make my life easier, honestly. So uh, as I think about, I'm gonna to have to draw a rectangle here, I'm gonna to have to draw a triangle, and I'm gonna want the whole thing to sort of fit inside of a width and a height. So, so what I actually think I'm gonna say is that x, x, y is actually right here. So it's actually not part of the, the house at all. It's just sort of the upper left coordinate of, uh, you can think of it as like the bounding box of the, of the house. So if I drew a box around the whole house, maybe I should have done this ahead of time, but picture a, a, a box that goes around the whole house, the X, Y coordinate of the house is the upper left corner of that, that outside box. And then the width is the width of that box and the height is the, the height of that box. So in other words, my house is going to fit completely inside of this, this, this rectangle that I've drawn so far with a triangle here and a rectangle here. Um, yeah, so that, that makes sense to me. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And if not, then hopefully it will make sense in a minute. Um, so what I'm going to do is sort of base all of my internal coordinates off of these the, the arguments that I've been given. And so what I want to do is maybe calculate um, some inside variables and let me just do it offhand here. So um, let me actually let me do it this way. So uh, I'm going to split my house into uh, I should have I should have googled some synonyms or something but like I, what is this part of the house called? Uh, like not the roof but maybe wall or front I'll call it front I think. Um, so my uh, front x is actually going to be the same thing as house x, and so maybe I won't even bother with that, but my front y is going to be house y, which is all the way up here, plus some value. And since I know what my house height is, I'm going to do something like house height times 0.5, something like that, so that my uh, my front part of my house starts about 25% of the way down the whole height of my house. And then the other thing I need is the front height, which is going to be sort of house height times 0.75. It's probably a smarter way to do this subtraction and addition, but you know, whatever, it'll work. So I've got my front y and my front height, which is like this value and then this value. So I can use that to draw another rectangle. So I've got house x, which is going to be the leftmost edge. And I want front y, and then I want house width, which is the, you know, the whole width of everything, and then front height. And what I'm hoping to see is another rectangle sort of inside of the rectangle I'm already drawing. 
And yeah, there it is. So you see like 25% of the outer box is reserved for the roof. And I think maybe that wasn't enough room. I think maybe I should have maybe done like 0.5. We'll see after I draw the triangle. I think maybe that's not enough, but you know, we'll see. We'll see where it takes us. Um, so the next thing I want to do is draw this triangle for the roof. And I want this point, which we already calculated, and then this point, and then this point. And I think we can probably do all of those in line. So triangle. Um, I, I always uh, throw myself off the triangle, but I'm going to try my best. Um, the triangle. Uh, function takes six parameters and so what I want is front y uh, wait sorry uh, house x front y that will give us this point and then let me go up to this point and that's going to be house x plus house width times 0.5 and let me maybe put this on a new line um, so house x plus house width times 0.5 gives us like right here so this is house x then house width divided by two or times 0.5 is right here. So that's this parameter. Um, and actually the Y is just going to be house Y because it's the tippy top. And then I can do um, the, the, the rightmost point of the triangle is going to be house X plus house width, no multiplying by 0.5 because I want the full width. And then um, the Y is going to be front Y again because we are back to the sort of the top of the front semicolon and let's see where this goes so yeah that's about what I would expect so I've got my rectangle down here you actually can't really see it because I let me comment out this this outer rectangle so I've got my front part of my house there's probably a better word for that and I've got my roof part of my house and let me maybe take this back up to 0.75 and see what that looks like. Um, I don't think that was the right thing to do. Oh, I didn't want this to be, this is 0.25, right? Um, let me, let me, I think I'm breaking something, but let me just put my outer rectangle back for a second. So front Y is house Y times 0.25. Front height is, uh, this one still needs to be 0.75, right? So yeah, that's that's um, that's the relationship between those two. So eh, I could go either way. I think maybe it should be like 0. 0.6 and 0. 0.4. You know, you you you've probably seen me just kind of fiddle with uh, parameters quite a bit. I'm gonna try to resist that. That doesn't look bad, and you know, I'm I'm kind of okay with this uh, this sort of ratio between front and roof and um yeah let me maybe add a comment so front and roof so what do i want to do next uh, i think maybe let's get these windows out of the way so the windows are going to be rectangles as well and let's think about where they should be so we've got the front why we've got like this coordinate um and I think we can sort of just add a, uh, a multiplier. Let's see. So if I do like, um, let me create a window, left window X, maybe left window X equals house X plus house width times 0.25, something like that. And left window Y equals house, uh, actually front Y plus house height, um, house height times 0.25, maybe, something like this. And then I can do something like, um, let's say window width and window height. Um, actually, I can do that because the windows are gonna be the same size, so let me do that first. Um, window width equals house width, and so if the house width is this, then the window width is not quite half, maybe 0.25. I, I like to use these kind of round numbers because they're easier to, to add up in my brain. Height equals house height times 0.25. And uh, all these coordinates are kind of just relative to the arguments that are being passed in, um, sort of similar to how you might have used width and height before. 
So now I've got my coordinates for my window. I can do something like rect left window x, left window y, window width, window height. And what I'm hoping to see is a little uh, rectangle up in that corner. And not quite. Um, and I think that's because um, I, I took my whole sort of my sort of house height to calculate the the value here, the y value here. And what I really wanted to do was the front height because I don't want to take into account the, uh, the roof height as well. So I guess I can probably calculate the window height that way as well. Let's let's see. Um, that looks okay, I think. Um, not sure if this looks right. 0.25. Oh, I guess it does. I guess it ends up right in the middle if you, um, cause like the left, the X coordinate is 0.25 and then the width is 0.25. So I'm ending up right in the middle cause that adds up to 0.5. So I think I want to decrease some of these. So house, left window X, I am going to decrease this quite a bit. I think maybe 0.1. Yeah, I think that looks a little better. And I don't know, again, I could fiddle with this quite a bit, but um, let's just kind of say that that's about where it should go. And, you know, I could draw the lines, but I'm gonna draw the next window actually. So I, I think I realized that the window Y is gonna be the same for both. So let me move this a little bit. Window Y. Window Y, that should not change, right? Okay. So I've got my one, my left window, and now I need my um, my right window. And so let me think about this. So I'm gonna say right window X equals, and I, I messed this up with the, the pig last night, so I'm not gonna make the same mistake where um, I can't base the left edge of the right window off of the same kind of additive logic because then it it doesn't make it uh, symmetric, which is the word I was looking for last night. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is I want to find this value and then subtract some some value to get to where this needs to be so that they end up being uh, sort of even. So what I want to do is find um, house x plus house width. That's what I'm going to start with. That takes me all the way to the right edge. And then I want to subtract um, window width and then I want to subtract this house width times 0.1 so minus window width uh, let, let me do this the other way let me subtract house width times 0.1 let me add some parentheses just to make this a little bit more readable and maybe a new line just because this screen resolution is ridiculous and then I also want to subtract the window width. So this is probably confusing, but, uh, and it probably doesn't work, but let me push play to see what breaks. And of course, something breaks. Uh, oh, because I'm not using it at all. Duh. So let me use it. Um, I've got my right window X, my window Y, my window height. Sorry, width. I always mess those up. Width and window height. Yep. So uh, the way that this line of code works is I first calculate house x plus house width, which takes me over to this edge. And then I subtract house width times 0.1, which is this amount of space. So that's this amount of space. So that takes me over to here. And then I subtract the window height or the window width, sorry, uh, which takes me over here. So that's getting me to the sort of left edge of the right window, so that they're symmetric, so that the uh, the space between the uh, the left edge and the space between the right edge are the same. Um, so this is looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to take a second here to sort of test that my my. Uh, my relative coordinates are right and the way I'm going to do that is to sort of play around with the values that I'm passing in So if I move it over to zero that seems to work if I move it up a little does that work seems to work if I make it really wide 
that works. And if I make it a little taller, you know, that works. And, and that's sort of the, the, the payoff of basing all of our coordinates off of the, the parameters, because now no matter what I pass in here, it'll draw a house. It might be a stretched out house or a smushed down house, but it'll be a house. So let me maybe put some of these back. So oh, yeah, there's my house. Um, I think we want to kind of skip um, drawing the lines. Uh, it would be very similar to to what we just did, only with lines. Um, and we'll see how I feel at the end. Um, so the last thing I want to maybe do is the door, and it's going to be very similar to what we what we've done so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say door x equals and let's see this one I want to I, I think I want my door to be centered so I'm going to start by calculating the center X and then I'm going to subtract a little bit so I'm going to say actually um, before I do that sorry I'm going to calculate the door width because that's going to come in handy so I'm going to say door width equals uh, house width times some number I, I can change these uh, but I'm going to start with 0.25 and what I can do is say door X equals, um, so calculate the middle first. So it's going to be house X plus house width times 0.5. So it's like house X plus house width divided by two is right here. And then I'm going to subtract door width times 0.5 so that I've now subtracted half of my door. So it's giving me the left edge of my door. And same kind of thing, I think, for door height, actually. So I'm going to do const door height equals, I want my maybe front height um, times, um, you know, 0.25, just to, just, to, just to try it. And do I need to calculate door y? I do, but it's kind of based off of other variables. So I want uh, door y to be, let's see. Um, it's going to be house y plus house height, which gives me the very bottom, minus door height, which gives me the top. And that was kind of a lot, but hopefully we see the payoff when I draw the, the actual door. So door x, door y, door width, and door height. So what I'm hoping to see is a little rectangle down here. And I do. I might make the door height a little bit bigger, so maybe like 0.4. Yeah, that looks pretty happy. Um, I could play around with where my windows are. Maybe I move my windows up a little. Let's see if this works without breaking everything. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I maybe maybe down just a little bit. That looks a little better. Um, cool, whatever. I can maybe make these a little bit more square, but eh, it's fine. They're picture windows. And one more thing is the doorknob. So I need to find my doorknob X and Y. Uh, so const doorknob, I don't know if doorknob is one word or two, but whatever. Um, doorknob X equals, it's gonna be door X plus a little bit. So door width times 0.1 maybe, something like that. And const doorknob Y is going to be, I'm gonna say, based off of door Y, which is right here, and then plus, I don't know, maybe just put it right in the middle, door height times 0.5, so that'll be somewhere in here. So X is somewhere here, Y is somewhere here, and I'm just gonna, maybe I should give it, um, I'm, I'm trying to decide on the size of my doorknob, and I could give that just a hard-coded 10 or something, or I could do another multiplier. I, I think I'm gonna do a multiplier, actually. So const door knob size equals, I, I kind of choose either width or height. Um, I'm gonna guess eh, maybe width. I think width is generally gonna be the smaller one, but it doesn't really matter. So uh, door, or sorry, uh, house width times something pretty small. So 0 0.05, something like that. So now I've got my door knob circle, door knob X, door knob, Y door knob size. Okay. And I'm guessing it's going to look stupid, but we'll find out. Hey, that's actually pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And maybe I'll move it over a little bit, 0.15 instead of 0.1. And I 
That's not too shabby, I'm going to say. That is definitely a house. Cool. Um, I'm going to quickly check how long I've been talking. And eh, 25 minutes, eh, it's probably too long, but I'm debating whether I do these lines or not. I think I'm going to skip them. I think um, the code I post at the end will contain them. So if you want to go back and find the lines, you can, you can find them. Um, but I don't want to just sit here and fiddle with... Uh, the same arguments over and over again because I, I think you see the pattern which is you define the function you take some arguments and then based on those arguments you you calculate anything that you need and then you draw some something based on that um, so these are windows and this is my door I guess I don't really need these comments because it's kind of obvious what they are but whatever I might end up deleting these comments um, so now a couple things I want to do. First of all, let me maybe just play around with these parameters just to check them again. So what happens if I make it uh, wide? That looks right. It looks a little funny, but it looks right. And if I make it a little bit wider or taller, yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, again, those lines are really bugging me, but I kind of ran out of time. Cool, so the next thing I wanna do is maybe just add some colors really quickly. And my front, what color do we want our, our, our front of the house to be? We want it to be, I don't know, maybe yellow. And I always try to guess at uh, what the RGB is gonna be. I'm always wrong, but I still find it fun. So I think it's gonna be a mix of R, G, and maybe less B. And I was, I don't know, maybe, Orange is close to yellow. I'm going to give myself some credit, so I'm just going to quickly do yellow RGB, just find something. Oh, uh, right, uh, it's RNG mixed together. I, I put too much blue. But let me find something that's not so so glaring. Lemon chiffon, maybe. That's pretty, that's pretty fancy. I think maybe a good like, light yellow. This looks pretty good. There's my yellow house, and I want my roof to, I think, be brown. I think that's going to be another RG kind of thing, but um, brown RGB. And uh, I, I kind of hate this page just because it's so overwhelming, but it certainly is a list of RGB values for brown, so that's what I asked for. Fill and my parameters that I've stolen from the internet. Maybe add some spaces just to make it a little bit more readable. And okay, so uh, that's not too too unexpected yet. So I've got my yellow house, my front of my house, my roof. I want my windows to be blue. So let's just see what straight up blue looks like. Fill um, R G B, just straight up blue. It's probably gonna be too dark. Yeah, it's a little bit too dark. So let me give it some green to make it a little bit more teal. Eh, it's not bad. And actually, I'm going to make my door brown, too. Maybe the same brown. Maybe that'll be a nice uh, symmetry symmetry with the colors. Eh, I could go either way. And the doorknob, I think I'm just going to make the doorknob black. Did I really just comment circles? Yeah, this is funny. Um, this uh, this demonstrates why the, uh, parameter, the why this comment isn't super useful. It's just kind of like repeating what the code does without explaining anything about it and it, it doesn't really make it any more readable but whatever so all right cool I, I'm gonna call that my house um, it's got a roof it's got some windows it's got a door it, it maybe not the most beautiful house in the world but it, it's a house and that's that's what matters so when you call the um, the draw house function it, it draws a house it does exactly what it says and so now here's sort of the payoff I don't ever have to look at this function ever again. Uh, I mean, I, I will, but um, the sort of the details of, of how this draw house function works, they, they no longer really matter to me. And so what I could do is something like, um, let me do something like this. Let me call frame rate one and let me, let's draw random houses. And let's say we wanna draw a house with a random, Actually, let's, uh, yeah, let's say random, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Random value between zero and width for the X, random value between uh, zero and height. That's probably gonna be too too crazy, but whatever. Um, 
random width and random height. So I'm giving it um, a random x value, a random y value, a random width, and a random height once per second. And let's just see what that looks like. So a lot of these houses are going to look silly, but that's because the parameters I'm, I'm passing into them are silly. So let me maybe constrict this a little bit more. Um, let me say, let's just always kind of draw it at 25, 25 so that we can at least see them. And yeah, so you'll see that, you know, the draw function, what the draw function does is draws a background and then draws a house with random parameters passed into it and it doesn't you don't really need to worry about the details of the draw house function you can you can write your code in such a way that that's kind of abstracted away from you would be kind of the word for it um, so let me maybe restrict this a little bit more so that it doesn't uh, generate like torn down houses that's depressing um, so you can kind of think about what uh, what parameters would make for a good house or a bad house or anything like that um, yeah, so, so let, for just for demonstration purposes, let's maybe do a couple more sort of examples of how you might use this. So one thing I could do is, um, this is kind of working ahead a little bit if you're going through the tutorials, so I apologize, but what you could do is something like define a mouse pressed function and have the mouse press function draw a house at mouse x mouse y 100 100 and i don't need this anymore and i don't need this anymore so by default what's going to happen is well nothing because draw draw only draws the background actually now that i'm thinking about that let me let me move something let me move the background call up here um 220 I hate this gray but I'll change this eventually so now actually the draw function does straight up nothing um, so my setup function calls the background function and now when I press the mouse what's going to happen is it's going to call the draw house function with some parameters that will draw a house so I click and there's a house and I click and there's a house and I click and there's a house and I click and blah 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 um, so just for fun maybe let me change this to uh, something like mouse dragged so that we can create like a whole neighborhood of houses. So, you know, it looks kind of silly, but the idea being I'm writing code that calls this function and I don't really need to know what, what that function does other than, you know, the, the output will draw a house, uh, but I don't need to know the details. Um, and just to bring it back a little bit, maybe I'll, I'll write one more kind of example of, of why this pays off. So let me, remove some of this stuff um, first off so we're going to draw a background and what I'm going to do is just kind of draw four houses so I'm going to draw a house in towards the upper left so 25 25 maybe and let's just start with um, like 100 100 and I can change these as I go but let's start upper left and then so if you're watching this and you're kind of new to creating functions so far all of our examples they're not very compelling because you could have done them without defining a draw house function. Um, like this, right now, the code we have, you could do the exact same thing just by moving all of this code up into the draw function, and you, that would work. Um, however, we have sort of this power to call the draw house function as sort of a stamp. Uh, so you can think of it as stamping a house. So if I want to draw another house, what I can do is call the draw house function. And let's put this over more towards the middle. Uh, maybe, maybe still, maybe like a 50. And make, let's make this one a little bit bigger and maybe quite a bit taller. And so now if you think about what this program or what this sketch, what this code would look like if I had not defined a draw house function, you would have had to basically write the same code twice. And you know this, 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 there's no limit to this. I can keep going. Um, so let me go back to the left side. Let me maybe move down a little bit to 100. Let me make um, maybe in the middle somewhere, uh, 125 maybe, and 150, something like this. Let's see what happens. Um, let me move that down. But the idea is like, 
if I didn't have this draw house function, then this code would get really messy. And because I do have this draw house function, I, I can sort of just call it without without worrying too much about it. So if I do one more, maybe towards the middle, maybe 100, um, actually this one will be down there, 75, 75. So I want one sort of down here now. And you can keep going. You can you can think about what what you would do with this kind of power, but this this concept of putting your code into a a unit in this case into a function, and then having a different part of the code use that unit or in this case call this function, you see that all the time, and it helps you organize your own thoughts. So like we've demonstrated now, um, after I define this draw house function, I can call it however I want. And as you get into sort of the more maybe professional areas of software engineering, it, it also helps you work with other people. So you can think about how you might work on a team and you could say it's one person's job to write the draw house function. It's another person's job to uh, define the draw function, which will call the draw house function and you can work together that way by sort of isolating the parts of the code base that you work on and you know that's that's how my job works that's how a lot of software engineering works where one person does one thing and the other person will use the thing that that other person is working on in this case we're talking about functions but it applies to other things as well uh, so I know I've rambled for quite a while tonight. Um, the last thing I want to say is that this this idea of creating functions, it, it goes all the way sort of down. So our draw function calls draw house, and our draw house function calls a bunch of different functions. But for example, it calls rect, it calls triangle, uh, it calls fill, and those are functions that somebody else wrote. And in this case, it's you know p five. JS uh, developers uh, wrote them. And I, I maybe should have looked this up beforehand, but you know, the spirit of these videos is that I don't really prepare anything ahead of time. So uh, like here's the code for P5 and I can maybe try to guess at where these, um, where these functions would be defined. There's a bunch of different like files and stuff um, 2D primitives, that sounds promising. So let's see, like circle uh, equals is what I think I saw. Um, yeah, so so the, the syntax looks a little funky just because they're using so, some other concepts that maybe you haven't seen before, but the idea is that here's how they defined the circle function. So when I'm in my code and I call circle, um, this is the code that runs exactly how when I define draw house and then call it, it called my draw house function. So when I call circle, it calls this function and this function calls this other function. Uh, and let's see if I can dig into this at all. Um, so circle calls render ellipse, which, uh, yeah, I mean, this is where the magic happens, I think. So this is doing some things like checking, like if you pass in a width that's less than zero, then it'll kind of fix that for you. So you can practice, you can kind of see the evidence of that by trying it out, like call circle with a negative number and it'll magically work because somebody wrote this line of code and you don't need to worry about it as somebody who is calling the circle function uh, because somebody else sort of handled that for you. Um, so we can go down another level maybe, let's see, um, render 2D I think is what we're looking for. And, you know, this is kind of more like this is super advanced and this is like part of the beauty of open source is that you don't really need to know any of this. But, uh, you know, if you're curious, this is, I, I like kind of poking around in this. So the circle function called that other function and that other function calls this ellipse function. And this function, this, this gets into some of the lower level like drawing functions. So this calls bit, I don't know how to say this word, but Bezier curve two. So this is like drawing the, the shape around the circle and then filling it and, you know, doing all these things. And I have no idea what that number is. That's terrifying. Um, I'm not even going to try to understand that. Uh, but I mean, that's the, that's kind of the beauty, right? Like I, I don't need to know these details, these implementation details they're called. 
uh, in order to accomplish my goal, which is a little bit higher level. I, I don't care about how the pixels get rendered to the screen. I just want to draw a house. And that's kind of the power of, of creating functions. Uh, all right, this is already going way too long, so I'm going to stop there. But my plan here is I'm going to post this code. Maybe I'm going to clean it up just a little bit and you know add some lines to the windows just to complete it. And then tomorrow I'm going to start from from where I left off tonight and you know take this to the next level and really demonstrate kind of the power of of creating functions. Um, but if if you just want to play around with this example, what you can do is you know obviously my house is not super great looking, um, so you you could spend some more time making this look you know more realistic or prettier or more like the house you actually live in. Uh, I think that would be pretty cool, and you know you could maybe add some other features to it. Like I don't know, maybe you have a chimney, maybe you have a tree out front or a little dog uh, in your yard. You know, whatever your house looks like in, in your own heart. Uh, home is where the heart is, right? Uh, anyway, there, there's a few things you could do, but uh, I'm going to stop here and pick it back up tomorrow night. So uh, as always, thanks for watching. If you have questions or comments, you know, you know where to leave them. Um, come to happycoding.io. It's free and we would love to have you. Um, so don't hesitate to say hi, but um, yeah. All right, cool. Have a good night. And as always, happy coding.